Hi, welcome everybody. We're just going to wait a few minutes for people to log in and pop on. So hang tight. But in the meantime, as people are coming in, just please note at the bottom of your screen, if you're on um, your phone or on the computer, there is a Zoom toolbar where you can see the chat, the participants, and there's also a Q&A section. So feel free to pop any question and um, questions in the Q&A or in the chat, and we'll try to kind of address those as we go along or at the very end. And when you're doing the chat function, please make sure that it says to all panelists and attendees so everybody can see what you're writing. Um, yeah, so just hang tight. We're gonna wait for just a few minutes for people to log on. In the meantime, you can kind of put your name in the chat, let us know where you're from. Why do you like shochu? <laughs> Enough. 
whoever pops on late, they will just be late. <laughs> so before we get started, I just wanted to quickly introduce myself. My name is Ida Vong. I'm a sake specialist. I work for Los Angeles Mutual Trading. Uh, from time to time, I do help out with Sake School of America, as you can see. Um, yeah, and you can also see some of my articles on the Sake School of America website. I write the Sake Splash. And and I just want to <laughs> uh, let you guys know that we will be doing an event overview and then I'll hand it off to Ueno-san who will hand it off to Dilla. So for about the first kind of half of the event, we're going to get a quick intro to Shochu by Ueno-san, of course. And then we will also talk a little bit about the feature Shochu for today, which is the Ginlei Shiro and then the Kintaro. Um, after that, uh, Dila-san will make two original cocktails for us and she'll kind of share her thoughts uh, on sho shochu in the bartending scene and also in the restaurant scene. And then we'll have a small Q&A followed by a short quiz where you have the chance to win the Sake School of America Shochu Advisor course for free. Um, this is open to everybody that's here uh, that is interested in taking it. So make sure to take notes as we go along because he does ask some really obscure <laughs> questions. Um, and at the very end, we're going to do our goodbyes and answer any final questions. And then if you're curious to know what the answers are to the quiz, you'll have to stick around, okay? I'll hand it off to Ueno-san now. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to Shochu Locks. Uh, Tosho Ueno is here. I am an executive instructor for uh, Sake School of America, which is a subsidiary company for Mutual Trading Company. And Mutual Trading is a Japanese food and non-food importer and distributor. We are celebrating 94 years today, uh, this year. I am so glad and excited that we are having such esteemed guests at this Lok Shochu seminar like Dita Lee today. Dita uh, is currently living in Chicago 13 years ago, she moved to the United States from Turkey. Wow. When she was born and lived until she was 22 years old, she studied the Japanese language while in school for her bachelor degree and received her master's in education in Japanese. When Dita first moved to the United States, she worked in a small Japanese restaurant in Chicago, where she learned about the cuisine from a very traditional Japanese family. And um, she moved to San Francisco. After that, she landed the job at the restaurant facing the Bay Bridge. That also happened to be one of the most well-known Japanese restaurants in the San Francisco city, which was Osmo. And then where uh, the, 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 you know, one of the most uh, largest sake program in the country, she handled and moved on to uh, Alexander's Steakhouse. Uh, three uh, there, did our work under Claude Le Tohik, a James Beard Award winning and three Michelin star chef, where she had the um, most impressed wine list in San Francisco. And then she moved back to Chicago now. Uh, and uh, She decided to balance her extensive knowledge of sake and Japanese cuisine with high end service and fun, approachable of atmosphere. So she is now with a uh, Chicago, and here is the our guest for today, Shochu Rockstar Dila Lee. Uh, she's got to unmute. There you go. I just said, can you guys see me? <laughs> Hi. Can you guys hear me? Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, bueno, son, thank you, first of all, for having me. It's such a pleasure to uh, be a part of this project. And um, I'm really, really proud that um, I was invited to do this with you today. So uh, everything you have said um, is like with my background. I think that walking into my very first Japanese restaurant, in um, a little like a Champaign, Urbana city where it was a college town actually really got me involved in the cuisine and the Japanese spirits that I would like to say. Um, I learned from a very, very um, traditional family about the food first and 
after probably drinking hot sake for like months and months, I uh, figured out that there was better versions of it. So uh, I decided to explore a little bit more and um, I moved to Chicago after that where I worked in a restaurant that I was able to uh, taste and um, practice more about sake. And that's actually where I met Ayasan as well, who is also an instructor at Sake School of America. And after that, it just took over and it's been 13 years so far. Um, I studied Japanese language and then I did my master's in Japanese in education in a school in Turkey as well. Um, and right after my graduation, um, I got a job actually with Toyota. And after three months, I decided that sitting in an office and translating all day was not what I really wanted to do. And um, told my family that I was going to go to States one more time before I switched jobs. And I just decided to stay over here. And uh, this is my story, but it's obviously like my passion. Um, everything I would say Japanese from culture to cuisine to business and um, spirit. So um, again, thank you for um, letting me be a part of this project. Thank you, dear. Of course. Now I'm gonna go through uh, Shochu fundamentals. So uh, you have seen the previous slides Talking about basic information, shochu. Shochu is a Japanese uh, spirit. Uh, where is that? Uh, castle. Next one. Yes. Uh, Japanese uh, spirits. It is distilled spirits, not brewed uh, alcohol, and distilled only once time as a pot, uh, uh, by the pot still. Has to be made with koji when we are talking about authentic shochu. And um, Main ingredients are five of them, sweet potato, barley, rice, brown sugar, buckwheat. And history of shochu is around, uh, it was around 16th century in Japan, but you know, across the nation like uh, uh, China has already started the uh, distillation 13th century. Amori's origin, uh, Amori's uh, neighbors, uh, Thailand, you know, Amori is made with Thai rice. So they are uh, making distilled spirits in 14th century. So. Uh, I think it's, it was there around 15, 14, 15th century in the Aomori regions and then came to uh, Kyushu Island, I believe. And only written recorded evidence of shochu was found in, at the temple in Kagoshima, where two carpenters or brothers were working for in renovation of that temple. Well, they wrote the complaints uh, about the monk was not offering any shochu to them uh, so they made a graffiti on under the roof. One piece of the, the wood says that uh, monk was too stingy, stingy and she, he did not offer any shochu to them. So they are complaining about that. That's the evidence, the old uh, recorded evidence, a text uh, in Japan. And, uh, you know, Kyushu is in you know, the southern part of Japan. So climate is warm and humid. So the, that's why we use uh, black and white koshi more often because those uh, koshi, black and white koshi produce more acidity, higher acid than yellow koshi. And, uh, you know, we, they have more uh, ing different ingredients from the sake. They use barley, sweet potato, brown sugar, buckwheat. The reason why is that it's very hard to grow uh, I mean, uh, Eastern region of the Kyushu is very hard to grow rice because uh, we get, you know, they hit, get hit by a typhoon, hurricane, many times a year uh, in the springtime and the summertime. So uh, very hard to grow. And also they have, uh, you know, Sakurajima uh, volcano uh, active since 1914 and ash, you know, Kagoshima, they cannot grow any rice there. It's very hard to grow them. And you know, also uh, sweet potato saved so many lives in 400 years ago, or three, uh, 400 years ago, because there, there's a severe famine, and I think over 10,000 people died, and because they didn't have enough food to eat. So sweet potato was imported from China to feed them and save life. That's why the Kagoshima has a lot of uh, sweet potato grown there. Okay, well. And let's go on here. Japanese shochu makers, as, as I said, 
about 77% of the shochi makers are in this slide on left corner. Says 76.6% of the shochi makers are located in Kyushu and Okinawa. And the largest one is Kagoshima, 106 of them. This is a 2017 data. And second largest is Kumamoto. And next one is Miyazaki and Oita and Fukuoka follows them. And that's that. So next slide. Let's go. Well, you know, uh, sake and shochu use koji. It is different from Western style fermentation because wine is made from uh, sugar because the grape has a sugar itself in in a uh, uh, plant. I mean, uh, grape. Uh, how do you say that? Fruits. Fruits has a grape. Fruits has a sugar in there. So you don't need to convert to such sugar. But in the Western country, if you, uh, the ingredients are, doesn't have any sugar, it still has to convert to sugar, to uh, start to sugar using malt, like beer and whiskey, okay? But for Japan, we use koji instead. That's a microbe uh, that convert the starch to sugar. And it looks like this. On the top of the screen, slides is uh, showing you displaying uh, more uh, uh, European style, Western style uh, fermentation. So you make a malt. Malt is you know, when you put the barley into humidity warm condition, it will sprout. When the grain has a sprout inside, it will produce uh, enzyme inside and it's converting starch to sugar. But for European style uh, fermentation, it's sequential. So you make a malt and then uh, dry up and make a, in a different tank with uh, that uh, sugary uh, barley and also put the yeast and the alcohol and start fermenting. So it's a single line uh, fermentation, but it takes twice. So it's different from single fermentation like wine because single fermentation is just sugar converting to uh, sugar eaten by yeast and ferment and produce alcohol. For beer and whiskey, it's uh, making malt. Malt enzyme uh, is combining starch to sugar and then start fermenting. For Japan, Japan and many Asian countries uses this koji microbe and it's conversion of starch to sugar in difficult English name is sacrification and alcohol fermentation takes in the same tank at the same time. So that's very unique, and we call them multiple parallel fermentation. It's a big word that, that I can very uh, pronounce up quick, uh, smoothly. So the koji, mm. interesting. The koji is a Japanese unique mold or fungi, and there's a three types or more, but here we are you, just talking about three types, yellow koji and black koji, white koji. Yellow koji is mainly used for sake, soy sauce, and miso. And it creates light, green, fruity uh, uh, flavor and aroma. And black koji and, uh, black koji and white koji is used for shochu. Especially for armory, black koji is a uh, must. Meaning, in order to make uh, armory in Okinawa regions, armory is a shochu made in Okinawa, it has to be a black koji. And next one is white koji. Uh, white koji is a mutant mutant of, of a black koji, like uh, arbaino. So Dr. Kawachi was looking for very active uh, uh, spore in black koji, and he found a white one, and he took it out and inoculated itself, and it became very popular it's because it gives you lighter, clean, smooth taste comparing to the black koji. But now, many of the, uh, many people start liking black koji shochu. So the number one shochu in Japan at this moment is a black koji uh, sweet potato shochu, which give you a more savory, earthy, complex, rich flavor. And as I said, uh, shochu is just still one, only once, uh, by pop still, it's very different because you know um, uh, whiskey, a uh, brandy, 
is usually distilled more than twice. And shochu is only once. And it's very, you know, it has to be precise. And the reason why we don't have to distill so much is that the mash we make with koji produce much higher alcohol before, uh, the, from, uh, in the mash. Mash itself in whiskey or brandy is about 8% to 10% before distillation. But for shochu, it can be 17, 18, 19, 20, maybe higher. So you don't have to distill so hard, okay? That's why, uh, that's another reason why that the shochu has such a congener or you can also, you can taste the original flavor of ingredients like sweet potato, barley, because you don't distill so hard to take out, you know, people say, oh, this vodka is distilled four times and it's smooth and clean. Of course, you're taking all those characters away. But for shochu, we are trying to retain that flavors, okay? And there's the two types of uh, pot still. One is normal, normal distillation or we call atmospheric distillation. And the other one is reduced. Reduced uh, one is introduced in 1973 uh, from uh, making perfume. So what does it mean reduced? So when the, uh, the pressure is reduced, the boiling temperature of alcohol is lower. Like when you go to high in the mountain, you're trying to uh, bake a coffee, boiling point of the water is much, much lower. So what does it mean? So you don't damage the mash. It get, it's, it's distilled easily at the lower temperature. So you get more cleaner, lighter, and more fragrant pronounced aroma uh, characteristic you can get. But some people like more complex, rich uh, aroma and the flavor. So some people like more normal or atmospheric uh, ferric distillation shochu. It's, it's like, you know, you, do you like, it's, do you like, uh, white wine and against uh, you know, really uh, complex red wine. So today, number one, shochu is a ginrei shiro from uh, Kumamoto regions using rice and rice koji and using white rice koji. And this is less pressure, single distribution, six months, it's 24%. And I, I'm smelling it. Yeah, this has a lot of uh, fruits. I can smell green apple, some tropical fruits like lychee, mango, banana, pineapple, melons, all those tropical fruits and also orchard fruits. Yeah, very nice. This is, you know, this is, we call ginjoka. Ginjoka means, you know, you, you have this nice fragrant floral aroma. Uh, created by special yeast called, we call ginjo yeast. So this is produced with ginjo yeast. And let's have a taste. On the palate, uh, it's very, not so uh, heavy, it's lighter body. Alcohol is um, maybe it's very soft. And dryness is there, but not so dry. The mouthfeel is really, really lean, focus. And uh, it's very nice. It's, it's actually, you know, the smell, aroma uh, is exactly the character this one gets, like tropical fruits and some uh, stone fruits and orchard fruits. So very nice, very soft, smooth, and very easy to drink. Very friendly. And the finish is well balanced and length is not so much, but I can still taste some of the fruits there, uh, like green apple and maybe a little bit of uh, Asian pear. And intensity on the, uh, uh, the flavor is uh, moderate. And uh, it has you know, uh, not so much complexity, but it has really nice expression of ginjo. It's almost like a ginjoshu, sake. So it's very nice. It's a, I think this goes with well many uh, sushi sashimi, lighter flavor chicken, lighter flavor grilled uh, fish goes well. And this one is from Takahashi Shuzo in Kumamoto regions. Kumamoto region is, wow, it's a uh, Western 
side of uh, Kyushu Island, as you can see. And it's beautiful there. It's untouched uh, 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 region. Like Asachiko has been there and I've been there. And you, you, how many times? I took that you know, single line train there, like one hour, 30 minutes. So you get like 24, 25 tunnels and by the river goes up and you see, you know what, why they, Kumamoto has so much rice there and still make rice shochu? Because government, long time ago, 200 years ago, they said, oh, that's too far. Let, let them have whatever. And so government didn't bother them so much. <laughs> So it's funny because that's the reason why that their culture is so uh, uh, it's still uh, preserved uh, the way it used to be uh, temples and shrines and rivers and a lot. You know, also Kumamoto is very unique because you have a mountain side and ocean side, so you get both sides of the food too. Very nice uh, mountain food uh, and also the uh, the. Uh, ocean uh, the seafood. At the same time, ayu, uh, the, you know, ayu and eel is very famous there. And uh, yeah, it's an incredible place. I, I, if you have a chance, you should go. Okay, next one. In Kintaro, Kintaro is made of his body, his body koji, black koji king. Uh, it's a single water pressure and 24%. Let's have a taste. This is totally different. This one is like almost like he, uh, toasted nuts, toasted peanuts, uh, roasted uh, barley, of course, very grassy, very powerful too. It's really high aromatics on the nose on this toasted, roasted nose. Very round, ample flavor. Body is, it's, it's for 24 percent. This has a, such a big structure to it because of the alcohol and this black koji and the flavor is there from uh, Lose Bari. Very nice. Well balanced finish. Complex than the previous one, more nuttier, grassier, with umami, chocolate. Chocolate is there. Coconut, chocolate. And uh, what else? Yeah, it's, it's, it's this, is, this is something that uh, different from other type of Bari uh, shochu. This one is more savory, earthy, complex, toasty, roasted character. Very nice. And that's the expression. Complex is there. Nice length. I mean, it's, it, you know, stay in your mouth that the toastiness stage your mass, but it's not over powering. It's very nice. So that is coming from Nishoshida Shido and Fukuoka regions. Fukuoka region is very famous for what? Tonkotsu ramen and many uh, yatai there, you know, uh, small restaurants outside. Even they have, you know, so many, uh, even French restaurant, yatai, like you know, on the cart. It's amazing there, and uh, I, even though the the the, uh, the city is trying to minimize them, unfortunately, but you still can go there, and of course they have a lots of good food, and this one I will eat with pork. Pork, maybe more uh, heavy. I mean, more rich flavored dish, and uh, maybe smoked meat. And the, the dish with more umami to it, okay? And that's it for me. And here is uh, now Dira's turn. Thank yes. you. Hi. Hi again. Um, first cocktail today with the um, Ginre Shiro. As Ueno san was like explaining, it is a very um, sake like shochu. It is very floral. On your palate, there is a little um, ricey notes. Absolutely, as you sip more and more, it gets a little bit more chewier, which I actually quite enjoyed it by itself because of that reason. 
being light, but still being able to carry its weight was really important for me. But um, the other reason why I thought that it could be a really, really nice fit for a cocktail was the dryness at the end. Sometimes you're picking base spirit, the entry is really beautiful, it is light, but as you're drinking it, everything fades slowly, then you start adding more components in it and you're taking up so much from the base spirit. So I think the dry tail at the end with a little touch of umami, I thought it would work really, really well in cocktails. Um, more than just a couple ingredients could be used in it. So um, I made a meal with it. Moscow meals, I think, especially like during summertime too, it is like a really popular cocktail. I think all over United States. And every time I put a meal on the menu or as a special, it always becomes the most um, top seller, pretty much. But um, I just wanted to make one cocktail after tasting Kintaro for end of meal or like as an aperitif. And I wanted to make something more specific to maybe being able to enjoy like a, during a um, sunny patio lunch. So um, as we know that every Japanese restaurant has um, green tea. So I wanted to focus on making a green tea matcha meal that was very, very tea-like and very light on your palate. So um, I used a uh, matcha powder. This is a culinary grade. It is available at Whole Foods too. And uh, it's really finely grated. So um, it mixes really, really well and it dissolves really easy in um, hot water. So I already made it for myself but I literally use just half an ounce of hot water and one bar spoon. If you do not have a bar spoon at home, it's uh, not a problem. You can just use a small dessert spoon or any kind of spoon that is like a very small size. And just start maybe with a little lesser portion, but half an ounce of hot water and one full bar spoon of matcha absolutely works really well. My juice is right over here. I'm going to give it a little, here is the matcha started like sitting at the bottom and we will start building the cocktail right now so um it is two ounces of the ginroshire the kome shochu and then we will be using a half an ounce of our matcha juice i would say at this moment or tea and lime juice half an ounce again and we will use half an ounce of simple syrup so the other reason why i wanted to like focus on um easy built cocktails is sometimes during lunchtime we do not have the bartender the bar back and everyone around and the servers actually have to make their own cocktails so creating a cocktail that is with available readily available ingredients in-house and a very easy to memorize uh, ingredients i think is important so it is literally going back is two ounces of the ginrei shiro shochu half an ounce of the matcha tea we just made half an ounce of lime juice and half an ounce of simple syrup and we will be topping it with ice it is always a question, uh, how much ice do you normally put in your shaker tin every time I'm teaching? It actually really depends on um, how much you would like to dilute your cocktail. If you put so much ice that you fill your tin all the way up, you are not going to have so much room to have the air circulation. So the alcohol content is going to remain a little bit more than putting half a tin and that way you can actually have the air circulation break down the ice and you can actually lower the alcohol content. But Ginrei having already a low alcohol content, I actually use the top of the tin shaker instead of the um, bottom one. So I can measure my ice perfectly and fill it and it is time to rock and roll.
go. Probably 30 seconds is really good as the tin gets like really, really cold. But if you can actually um, go 20 seconds or 15 seconds should be fine too. So I use regular ice in my house, what I have available to shake the cocktail. However, um, to pour the cocktail in, I'm going to use a rocks glass and I will be adding the Kuramoto ice. Kuramoto ice is from Kanazawa and they are uh, the third, um, you know, family that are, they have been making ice since 1923. And when you're looking at the ice mold too, it is like the wabi-sabi, you know, the um, simplicity and the beauty of being like imperfect. There is slow melting ice which actually dilutes your cocktail much slower. So you can actually enjoy the original flavor of your cocktail much longer. They do make the sapphire style, the round and the cubes as well. So um, please go ahead and check them out, I would say. And we will be straining our cocktail. And I will top it with Fever Tree ginger beer. I really like Fever Tree brand because they are using natural ingredients and they are either taking the oils or the peels instead of like just using the juice. So they're really high quality, great. And I think like once you are serving the cocktail at the table side and pouring the ginger beer on top, the guests actually can decide how much more ginger beer they can have in their cocktail. So for that reason, it's important, I think, to leave like a, just a good amount of room in your glass. This was our first cocktail. Just a little um, lime peel is perfect. If you do have candy ginger around or in your restaurant that you're using as a garnish for other cocktails, that would also be really, really nice. And this one, I called it um, Mori no Kumasan because when I was reading about the prefecture and the top rice coming from the prefecture was Mori no Kumasan. So uh, I think it being the green and like me reading about the rice a lot just gave me the inspiration for the name. And the next shochu that I will be moving on is the Kintaro, the golden boy over here. This was like such a unique experience for myself too, because as soon as I dyed my nose inside the glass, the first thing that like hit me was like, when Osama was saying that toasted and roasted, I get that, but like the chocolate was really, really powerful. And with espresso martinis making a comeback, I wanted to just go ahead and try it. Also, I know how much work goes in some craft spirits that are also unique to the prefecture. I actually do not enjoy adding so much, again, to, uh, to the shaker to cover the base spirit. So to make a espresso martini with such a strong powered, yeasty, earthy, chocolatey, like butterscotch, um, shochu, I wanted to pick something that was going to accompany it and was going to pay respect actually to the shochu itself. So uh, I will be using the Van Gogh double espresso vodka. As I read more and more about this vodka, I'm getting more fascinated. It is a very small batch vodka that it takes about six weeks to produce. They are using roasted and toasted uh, Colombian coffee bean. So I thought that this could be the perfect marriage between um, Kintaro having those earthy notes and um, roast as well. So again, just to make it like really easy, but also um, not only easy to execute, but maybe not being so labor intensive, I made a very, very, very simple recipe for this one too. This could be really good for a before dinner or right after five o'clock or 5.30 when you get to your favorite Japanese bar or any other bar, I would say, um, as you're waiting for the rest of your crew. And again, it's super simple for this one. We are going to be using two ounces of Kintaro Mugi Shochu. 
which is the barley, and then the Van Gogh vodka, double espresso. And then two ounces of regular espresso. It is two, two, two. Pretty easy. Fresh made espresso makes a big difference. But if you are a high volume place, just maybe have your barista brew some um, espresso earlier and put them in squeeze bottles and keep it in your um, bar, in your refrigerator, I would say. Um, that's it. Everything is two ounces. And we'll take this one. Okay. Also, if you would like to balance your margaritas or your espresso martini, a pinch of Malden salt is always um, appreciated. It actually balances the cocktail by adding a little bit more acidity. So you may go ahead and do that. The classic espresso martini has three coffee beans on it, but um, I was blessed by a Japanese chef. She is the owner of Chocolatine, and um, she sent me some orange zest that is candied, covered in 72% um, dark chocolate. So I thought that it could be a nice complimentary. And right over here. Somebody saying drink responsibly all the time. But um, again, very simple recipes, really easy to execute, not just by a bartender, but anyone, anyone that's like actually in your staff by any manager that like during lunch or dinner, it's um, just extremely like uh, easy to do. And um, they're not very labor intensive. They're easy to have everything. You will have coffee, you will have green tea in your restaurant. So uh, ready to go. That's it. If you have any questions, I'm here. That is amazing, Dilasan. I love your recipes. And also Uenosan is putting up the slides for everybody right now, the recipes. Lovely. Um, mm. I really appreciate as a lay person who doesn't make cocktails very often that you source very simple ingredients. Mm -hmm. The, you know, the preparation is not too difficult as well. And, um, it's simple, but it's beautiful. And I love the, the flavors that you put together. Cause I do think they complement it well. And you have fun Thank little you. names for them. Like, you know. Morino Kumasan. <laughs> I love Morino Kumasan, and I love that song too. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and you you recently took the Shochu Advisor class, right? Did, how was that for you? I did actually. It was um, you know I knew some of the basics of Shochu, but um, I was stressing so much about it because I did not know how intensive it could get, and um, doing the sake was. I was like, I got this, I got this, you know, so I did not worry so much about it or stress so much about it. But when it came to shochu and I'm like, Dila, you like, you don't know anything, you know, so I stressed even more. Um, and I even actually got a higher score for the shochu than the sake I did. So it was like, quite interesting. But now it actually grow a little bit more, um, you know, in me, absolutely right now. I don't think that I was paying so much attention to shochu before because sake being you know are I don't know it's like more popular so people actually like go for it more but um it drove a love for me right now that um when I'm walking in the dining room and I see that people are making choices that I will be actually introducing people to shochu more than I was doing it before so um I I think it's literally wake up like something inside me so i'm appreciative of it great thank you so much yeah i of highly course. agree like where people don't know about shochu because it's just not as popular as sake or as well known but once people get to know it they become like you know they fall in love with it and become fans so, yeah. yeah and that's what we are here for right we learn and we actually go ahead and transfer it to more and more people and help the love grow yeah does anybody have any questions? 
If not, we will move on to the quiz. Okay, guys. Uh, you're going to have four multiple choice questions. Select the correct answer and uh, make sure you use your uh, scroll down for all those four questions. And you have to answer during the music is playing. You have about three, three minutes and 58 minutes. Ah, three, <laughs> three minutes and 58 seconds. And uh, we'll be back. And uh, uh, Dira San's gonna say goodbye, the final words to you guys, and uh, so enjoy the music. I you know this music it should, should try to dis distract, distract you from thinking clearly to answer, answer the questions. questions. So there we go. Hi. Um, Hi. One of the things that I would say is, uh, you know, that Sachiko san um, was going over it many, many times too, that uh, being health conscious, you know, um, we now know that 
especially in LA too. When I worked for an LA company, every time we would come up with either new drinks or the chefs would come up with uh, new dishes, they were like, this wouldn't work because, you know, LA people are more conscious of, um, you know, healthier dishes. And it like literally started coming like all the way over here. And I see it quite often. So I think one of the like many, many other reasons is being low ABV and um, like it's helping with the blood clot. Like it's like really, really important. So you can like explain this to people. The other spirit that actually helps with that is gin. It actually stops the water like a retaining in your body, lets you like pass a little bit more um, water and flush everything out. So um, I think that after learning so much about shochu, like I scratched the gin and uh, moving to shochu right now, that's one. Two, it could be like really, really surprising actually once you start tasting like different varieties of it. So I think like Kintaro having all that chocolatey notes is like, oh my God, I was not expecting this from a spirit that looks clear in glass, has that many like different fragrances, right? So it's a quite a nice play. And I think that um, I can actually incorporate different styles of shochu, create different flights and help people to find what kind of shochu they would like. Um, I really believe in the um, power of doing flights, even for sake too, for people uh, that are not like really familiar to the product. And once you're serving them more than just one uh, for a price of one and, you know, giving them the options. One, it's a nice game to play. Two, it's a great way to engage with the guests that you are paying attention to them. Three is... Um, they find out actually what they like. So they go to the next Japanese restaurant, they know what they will be ordering. So in that sense, I really um, like playing around with shochu. Um, many, many other reasons that I would say is uh, studying shochu was like actually really fun also for myself, diving a little bit more deeper into the cuisine of the prefectures that they were coming from. So it gives me more ideas of like what I can pair with you. And as I started reading more and more, like it was a whole like a different world. And um, I think it will keep me busy um, educating myself too, so I can pass it to more people. Um, I always like a new um, challenge for myself. So I think Shochu is my next challenge at this point. Wow, thank you so much. Yeah. Of course, um, thank you. I love your mindset. Like you're always thinking ahead, like, you know, one step ahead, like just more than what kind of cocktails, but like what will this pair with and what kind of regional foods did it come with, you know? Um, but yeah, thank you so much for you know, sticking around. Um, it's always a pleasure to have you and you guys can all follow her on Instagram at all Dilla Lee. I put that in the chat for you. Um, she does some great Instagram lives. So please be sure to follow her. Thank you. Thank you again for having me. Like, uh, this is such a special project for me. So I'm, uh, I'm really grateful. Thank you. We're just as grateful. <laughs> All right. I'm going to hand it back to Ueno-san then. Come by. <laughs> Come by. Thank you uh, for uh, understanding our intention for this project and supporting this. And a big thank you to everyone participating in this seminar. Now, um, she gave us a uh, 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 suggestion and message. And we are big that all of us got together and keep this project going. Thank you again for Dira. And uh, before uh, repeating the quiz answer I did, you know, sometime I, I don't know how to use Zoom so well. That's why I have a, you know, our project manager, uh, Ida, helping me trying to coordinate these things, but I mess up sometime because I was trying to answer the, you know, what kind of music it was and I was trying to, you know, change the screen and yeah, sorry. But anyway, before being in the quiz answers, there are several important announcements in the following slides with uh, about four minutes uh, music. First one is the Discovery Channel is a producer is looking for master disher for Shochu. Three contestants, three contestants uh, they are looking for requirements are 
you have to be able, able to make a short stream from the camera, camera in a studio and you don't have a, distri a distribution in US yet. So it's a new people uh, wants to start making a shochu uh, spirits in US. So if you know someone, please, oh yeah. if you know someone, uh, please uh, take a notes on uh, this information that I'm gonna give you. This was the one. And, uh, and you, you have a little bit more information. And the second, uh, next slide is gonna give you a show to Rockstar uh, next time, uh, next dates and guest name, uh, Kimijima-san's schedule. And we have already two winners uh, from uh, last two sessions. And we have more information on next Sake School of America show and Sake classes. And then at the end, we have a, uh, answer that I showed you already but uh sorry about that so we gonna start some music here okay Uh, we just want to let you know that we do have a Sake School of America happy hour tonight. Uh, it's mostly probably going to be alumni, but if you're not alumni, feel free to join. We can answer any questions you might have. We can just geek out about Sake and Shochu together. Um, so I put that in the chat. And then if you are looking to join our next Shochu Rock session, I will have the events in the chat as well. And you can also see the cocktail recipes that we've done for the past events and the winner and upcoming winner of the Shochu Advisor class. All right, that's everything. Thank you guys so much for coming. Bye. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you.